Hi, my name's Ed. I'm a, a, an interpreter at the European Parliament. Um, how I became an interpreter, I, I studied languages at school. Um, I'm, I'm originally from Nottingham. I come from a you know, monolingual family in, in, very, uh, in, in, in the UK. Uh, I studied languages at school, enjoyed it, and then just carried on doing it. And so after that, I went on to study languages at, at university. Um, and in the last year at university, we did a little bit of uh, consec interpreting. And so that kind of gave me the idea, but then I, I left university and, and went off to work. And about five years later, this kind of idea about interpreting was, was, was still there. Um, at, the, at the time when I first left university, I didn't think a master's was possible for me or I didn't want to do it or it was expensive. Um, but then five years later, I was still thinking about it. And so I decided to, to, to give it a go and then went back to uni to do a, a master's in conference interpreting. Uh, I began with French, Spanish and Portuguese. Um, when I first did my accreditation, when I first passed my accreditation test, I actually failed my Portuguese. Specifically interpreting for the EU, I began with just French and Spanish. And then even though I had um, learned Portuguese, it took me a while to get that accredited. Right now, I'm also learning German and I'm at the, the, the scary point where I need to start thinking about adding it, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, I studied interpreting at the University of La Laguna in Spain. Um, they have a, a fantastic conference interpreting course um, that I would highly recommend. Uh, I think like, like most of the courses, it's a very practical course, so it's um, majority is, is consec and then simultaneous interpreting. But then they have um, lots of modules around certain subject areas that are useful, you know, economics and knowledge of the EU, other things around you know, ethics and professional conduct and um, speech therapy, etc, etc. Um, so yeah, and it's a course that's been running for many years now. When I first uh, passed my master's, I worked as a freelancer for about seven and a half years, um, during which time I freelanced uh, for the for the EU, so European Parliament, but also on the, the DG Skik side in, in the Commission and the Council, and also a little bit on the private market, so either for, for private clients or for, for some NGOs. Um, following on from that, the uh, European Parliament was looking uh, for uh, some temporary agents, so it's a, a fixed term contract rather than a, um, a, a it's a full-time position, but I'm not a permanent member of staff. I have a, a fixed-term contract. Um, I was interested. Um, I applied and I, I was lucky to be offered a post. Um, yeah, a, a couple of things, perhaps. Firstly, you don't need to come from a, a multilingual or an international background to be an interpreter. You have to have languages, obviously, but you can just learn them at school or university or or by living or working in a, in a country it doesn't matter how you get the languages you have to have them um, but yeah you, you can be just from a, a monolingual family and that's and that's fine the final thing i would say um, with interpreting and accreditations and international institutions etc etc you, you have to occasionally get used to, to failing an exam and that's something that has happened to a lot of people. It's not something that people would tend to put on their CV or, or put on their, um, you know, put on a website for, for example, uh, but it does happen. It happens to a lot of us and you need to you know, look at where you can do better um, and, and try and improve for the next time. 